Covenant is critical. Moving on, I'm calling this Covenants 101, how to comprehend God's ways. God doesn't do anything apart from covenant. His action is covenantal because covenant costs somebody everything and he's all in. Covenant is the extreme commitment of a perfect God to whatever it takes to accomplish his will. Ephesians says, he works everything according to the counsel of his will. This is a brilliant statement of the sufficiency of God. What's going to happen? Whatever God wants. He works everything according to the counsel of his will. What should happen? Well, let me see. I'm God. What do I want? Oh, okay. That's what I'll do. And he just... He pushes all of his chips in. He doesn't do anything half-hearted. He is perfect in all of his ways, and he's extreme in his love, and you can't stop him from chasing you. God is covenantal. Everything he does is enacted and fulfilled under covenant. So when we talk about righteousness and right standing according to covenant, covenant we have to understand that covenant determines our standing with God. Is this clear? That's why Israel operated under a special status for so long because they were the only nation that was in covenant with Yahweh. All of the other Gentile nations were outside the covenant. So there was no mechanism of righteousness for the Gentile nations because there was no covenant commitment from God to anyone but Abraham's seed. So the only people that could be righteous were those that were covenanted through Abraham, which is why Jesus had to come to uh, expand the good news to the Gentiles so that through Christ, the promise to Abraham could be extended to the Gentile nations. Because in the Old Testament, the only family on earth that could relate to God in righteousness was Abraham's family because that was the covenant God made. Yeah, you can just look at... You can just look at the, the, the page, covenant terms. I'm, I'm not going to go over all of that. That'll be useful to you for your own study. It's, it's good stuff. The covenant with Abraham by grace is perpetual. It's unilateral. This is important. God said to Abraham, I've got this. It's on me. Here again, we have a Sabbath picture. When God moves in Genesis 12, Genesis 15, and Genesis 17, three times where he describes his covenant, he initiates it, and he expands on it. In Genesis 15, when he seals the covenant with Abram, his name hasn't changed yet, he's still Abram. When he seals the covenant, what happens? A torch appears, animals are cut, and he puts Abram into Sabbath mode, right? Right? Abram, you aren't going to have a part in this. You have believed me. That's enough. Now go to sleep. So Abram adds nothing to the covenant. He doesn't add anything but rest and trust. And God passes through and dips his robes in the blood of the covenant and says, I will surely bring all these things to you in and of myself. While you're sleeping, I'm promising you in your rest, I am going to do this. There's nothing you can do to stop it. It's a unilateral covenant that Abram can't add to in his strength or his wakefulness or his resources or his power. All he can do is go to sleep and dream of receiving The promise of God through Abram is unilateral, and the only terms are to believe. I'm not going to keep going into that, but we have these various covenants. Creation covenant, Adamic, Noahic, Noahic, Abrahamic, Mosaic, Davidic, and the grace or new covenant. The Father is the covenant originator, the Son is the covenant executor, and the Spirit is the covenant witness. The Trinity is involved in full force and in total agreement, but the primary burden of fulfilling the covenant with His life fell on the Son. So in the counsels of God, God says, we're going to give them a choice, we're going to give them perfect conditions, they're going to rebel. 
We're going to rescue them. Son, you up for this? Dad, I'm all in. The Father puts the terms in place. The Son fulfills the terms. And the Holy Spirit is the witness to the deed and continues to witness. It's the pledge of our inheritance bearing witness forever that this is the work of God in Christ. Paid for, bought with blood, which sprinkles our conscience clean. Hebrews says, this is how God operates.